Hi everyone, I'm going to introduce our work entitled Witness Authentication Risk and Applications. I'm Han Wen. This is a joint work with Chiang Tang. I'll begin with background and our motivations. To say this, let's take a quick look at autonomous authentication, which is a major class of NIST applications. In general, it allows a user Alice to sign a message on behalf of a, a group and the verifier will be convinced this message was signed by someone in this group, but he cannot figure out who signed it. The anonymity is usually formalized via indistinguishability, but in literature, anonymity indeed have many variants according to adversaries' knowledge. The simplest case consider outsider anonymity. It considers an adversary that does not have any, key, any secret key of a group members. A stronger form is sometimes called selfness anonymity, which, which enables the, uh, the adversary to have all secret key except the victim's secret key. And finally, the full anonymity, which considers the strongest adversaries that could really have all secret keys, including Alice's secret key and Bob's secret key. On the other hand, the anonymous signing functionality is insufficient in many scenarios it's necessary to provide other desirable functionalities as well to make them easy to use. For example, the user may wish to detect a case closure, claim her authorship of a previously signed document, or clear herself from accusation when some bad guy some signed something illegal on, a group, on behalf of a group containing her. In more concrete examples, for example, the EPID signature provided by Intel's SGX is designed to support revoking users and the verifier site and many other features. And similarly, uh, anonymously blacklisting invalid users without trusted, trusted third party is also needed. There are more examples to list, and all of them have to lead to a trade off of anonymity. To, ex to explain this in more detail, we note that all of our functionalities are, are essentially built upon a very simple identification function. Namely, given the secret key, it allows identifying whether a, a, an anonymous signature was created using this secret key. It's easy to say that when adversary has the secret key, has a secret case of both Alice and Bob, she can run this identification locally and decide the real signer. Therefore, full anonymity is out of reach. And since the selfless anonymity does not give the victim's secret key to the adversary, the adversary thus cannot leverage this uh, identification. Self anonymity is the best possible privacy definition uh, that is compatible with identification. Besides those anonymous authentication schemes mentioned before, the privacy with identification style primitives appear in many other topics. In privacy paths, it is used to establish a covered channel between CDN providers to identify invalid users. In encryptions, the identification functionality is essential to enable searching encrypted data using plain text which is crucial for fast searching. So, uh, moreover, if a commitment supports identification, opening can be done by just presenting commit, committed message only. Uh, such a commitment is even used for, for instantiating RAM oracles in some settings. From a takeaway point of view, these primitives are popular because the compatible privacy is philosophically meaningful. It's protecting a secret against those who don't know it. However, although these primitives are, con are conceptually close, they were independently studied in many seemingly unrelated domains and lacked a unified view. And each has to be established from scratch and some of them indeed face faces uh, difficulties in designing. This is not the case for achieving privacy alone. 
we have a fundamental primitive, non-interactive zero knowledge, which is considered to be a source of, of privacy. This is a core of many anonymous authentication schemes. It can also be applied to enhance the security of many other fundamental primitives like encryption and commitments. The elegant, the elegant formulation of NISC enables easy design and analysis of uh, its applications. So when these anonymous authentications, encryptions, and the commitments need to be augmented with the identification functionality, it's natural to ask, can this support identification and be the source of identification, such that we can design and, and, and analysis other primitives in, in much simpler manner? In this work, we initiate the study of NIX with the identification functionality. First, we formalize it as a new primitive. Since we define the soundness of definition identification, which makes it uh, look like a message authentication scheme that uses this witness as its secret key, we term it by witness authentication list. We then give three modular constructions from basic prim primitives. And finally, we show the surprising power of this new primitive. We show how to use this prim primitive to, to give a very simple construction of a group signature supporting verifier local revocation. And we construct, we use it to construct plain test checkable encryption. And more interestingly, we show how to how this primitive can give can advance the, the, the existing non-malleable hash constructions which were presented to in slash eight random oracles in some settings. Okay, now let's model this new, prim new primitive. In standard ISC, assume a common, common reference string, a prover with a witness can, can create a single string called a proof to convince the verifier the statement is true. The identification functionality we consider is to enable identifying whether a proof is generated using a specific witness. And the straightforward formulation is to take both proof and witness as inputs. However, in, in many applications, the witness is structure. It consists of secret and RAM cones. And the user is only supposed to have the secret and does not have the whole witness. To make the identification more useful, we abstract the notion of identifier witness, which is a part of witness and the proof can be identified as being generated from witness that has this identifier. As for anonymity is incompatible with standards with identification, standard, standard zero knowledge is also incompatible with, uh, with uh, this identification. To say this, in this definition, the adversary uh, could receive proofs or, re or simulated proofs that were generated without using uh, any witness. And the statement and the witness, and the witness is, is chosen by the prover after seeing the CRS. So the identifier witness will be loan to the adversary. If there is, a, there, if there is an identification functionality, the adversary can leverage this function to distinguish the real proofs and the simulated proofs. So the standard zero knowledge is, is uh, out of reach. We have to rule out the case that the adversary knows uh, the identifier. So the only possible definition is to defend of adversaries without, without knowing the identifier. However, it's very tricky to model without knowing things in the context of NISC. First, as we consider non-uniform adversaries, they may already encode in arbitrary prior, prior, priori knowledge in their advice strings. And we cannot, we cannot decide whether this advice string has encoded some uh, identifiers. Secondly, sending information about uh, identifiers is always available to adversaries, at least the statement itself can be considered as a uh, set information about the identifier. And uh, finally, and most importantly, 
needs usually consider adaptive adversaries, which could choose statement and witness after seeing CIS. If we don't take adaptive adaptiveness into consideration, the result primitive may not be as useful as standard risks. We address above challenges by introducing unpredictable samplers into zero knowledge definition framework. The unpredictable sampler is a randomized uh, algorithm outputting a statement, an identifier part of witness, and the long identifier part. Since the statement is always available to adversaries, we require that the probability of finding the identifier given the statement is very small. We can measure the unpredictability using unpredictability entropy. Then the adversary can uh, issue can query the approval oracle using a sampler instead of concrete statement and witness, and the the approval oracle will uh, sample statement and witness using this sampler and generate real proofs or simulated proofs according to the sample result. Note that the adversary can affect the sampler after saying the CRS, and uh, she can and she can know actual knowledge about the sample as long as the final uh, identifier is unknown, is uh, still unpredictable to her. So this formulation is compatible with identification functionality and uh, it preserves the, the, the adaptiveness as much as possible. There are other subtleties to be addressed the first question is how to model proofs from same or related segments. This question uh, is due to that now adversary can only issue samplers that won't give the same statements in different invocations. Our solution is uh, first require a slate for proof oracle, oracle, which, which stores the previously sample result and allow adversary to query with another extended sampler, which can extend the previous samples, previous samples into same or related ones. The second question is uh, more subtle. That is, some samplers are not unpredict um, unpredictable alone, but unpredictable re with respect to an external trust par parameter generation procedure. This is due to NISCs is usually used and uh, used as a building block in a larger crypto system systems, and uh, when we consider an average case definition, average case definition, we have to take external procedures into consideration. So we introduce trust. So we introduce trust parameters generation procedures to model this and allow this and allow this kind of uh, uh, samplers. Putting all this. Uh, discussions into our uh, together we can give the final definition for entropic zero knowledges to be compatible with ident identification we have defined entropic zero knowledge and for ident ident identification itself we also needed to argument to some this to define the proper to define the uh, identity to define the functionality in terms of uh, malicious users the first intuition we seek to capture is that no one can avoid being identified. That is, a valid proof must be identified by an identifier witness known to the prover. We model this by augmenting knowledge soundness and require the extractor to extract a, a witness and the identifier witness from a valid proof, and the proof shall be identified by the identifier. Therefore, Authentication knowledge soundness clear, clearly subsumes the standard knowledge soundness. Next, what we want to capture is that no one can frame others. It's a message authentication like definition. The adversary's goal is to forge a proof being identifi identified by an unknown witness, if, even after seeing many proofs from those witnesses. This is why we call this primitive witness authentication knowledge uh, risks. The last, the last sunless, sunless definition is uh, identifier uniqueness. It captured the infeasibility of finding one proof identified by two distinct identifiers. This definition is useful when the adversary tries to 
generate a valid proof being set, being identified by a string which is not even which is even even not a uh, witness identifier. And we note uh, all this uh, for single applications, uh, it may not lead all these standard definitions, but uh, uh, we provide them to enable various applications. We have formalized we have formalized this new notion. Now let's construct it. The overall idea is to and uh, identifiable tag to NISC proof. The NISC proof shows the truthfulness of the statement and the tag is honestly generated. For achieving properties of the uh, witness authenticating NISC, the tag should 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 uh, satisfy many similarly uh, conflict properties. First. It should be identifiable, and it also should be unforgeable and simulatable. Even the input is just unpredictable. And uh, if we need, if we need identifier uniqueness, this tag should also be unique. That is, it cannot be identified with respect to distinct distinct input. After all this observation, we find the RAM oracles match all this requirement. But unfortunately, we don't know how to prove in their knowledge that a RAM Oracle based attack is honestly generated. So we have to find other ways. We start with a simple case where the, where the identifier is a, pseudo is a pseudo random condition on all public information. We note it's possible in, in autonomous authentication. And in this case, we can simply use a pseudo random, uh, pseudo -random, random function. Uh, and all properties can be easily verified. For a general case, then, then the identifier is non-uniform conditional on, on all public information. We cannot directly use the identifier as a PRFK. A simple solution is using RAM, is using RAM extractor to convert the identifier into a PRFK. Let's examine the properties. The identifiability can, and the uniqueness can be uh, can be easily satisfied from uh, underlying properties, but uh, simulatability and unforgeability, which originally depend on pseudonymous, now have to require the extractor to output a pseudonymous to uh, a pseudonymous string to be a PRFK. This requirement seems very trivial and first like glance due from the property of Ramnis tracker. But, but uh, uh, it's not in this case. First, as we consider, as we allow adversaries to have multiple proofs from the same identifier, we have to require the extractor. And if we put the seed into, as if we put, this, put the seed as a part of the tag, we have to require the extractor to uh, be reusable. That is, produce pseudonymous with many different seeds. However, reusability is a very long trivial property of, RAM, of a randomness extractor. And uh, the unforgeability considers malicious users. It may not choose a seed from uniform distribution, so the output of uh, uh, the extractor cannot be guaranteed to, guaranteed to be pseudo random. But fortunately, as we are in the CRS model, we can leverage the CRS as a seed, where put the seed put the seed into CRS, so we can use the same seed, seed for all for all tags, and the seed must be good for sure. And we can and then we can give us a, a secure tag generation, but however, the, the extractor needs seeds independent of a source. Putting seed into CRS will only work for CRS independent samplers. Our goal is to have a full-fledged construction for CRS-dependent samplers. Let's recheck the challenges. For reusability, known constructions require real, real entropy instead of, instead of, of unpredictability. To against bad seeds, we, we don't even know how to define which city is bad, which city is good. This difficulty, this difficulty is arising due to we use due to we use RAM extractors to extract PRFK, and they may be solved. They, they, they might be solved, 
if there is a vi strong variant of a random risk extractor. But however, we don't know how to achieve it yet. But from a takeaway point of view, we find we only need simulability instead of a pseudo -dominance. We don't really need to insist on using a PRF. We note its encryption is another source of simulability and the deterministic public, in public encryption allows to identify. We can use a DPKE to construct the attack. And uh, identifiability is easy to follow. Regarding simulability, we can use multi-user secure DPKE such that we can uh, ensure have uh, the simulability across many different uh, public keys. But uniqueness and uh, unforgeability will require the goodness of public key. That is, an encryption algorithm with this public key should be an injection. But the public key is chosen by provers. It left a, a question how to deal with how to deal with malicious PK. A solution, a solution is put into CRS, uh, put put the put the put the public key into the CRS, but it has to require the CRS independent samplers again. Our observation is that the goodness of public key, the algebraic, and we can enforce the goodness by cryptography instead of modeling. More precisely. We can ask least proof. Or we can ask uh, least proof showing the goodness of the PK. And putting all together, we put in a full fledged construction. Uh, we remark our construction can be based on standard assumptions, including denominator assumptions. Finally, we show how to use our new tool to advance the state of the art of, of applications. We show concrete examples of long malleable hash. It's a triplet. The hash, the caching algorithm outputs a public hash k. The evaluation algorithm maps an input to a hash value, and the verification checks whether the hash value is from a specific input. A lamable hash should satisfy collision resistance, perfect one, one witness, and lamalability. The lamalability, the lamalability requires one cannot have more. more a hash value into a, rela a related hash value. The malleable hash is proposed to instantiate random work, but prior work, if uh, the auxiliary information uh, is leaked to the adversary, it has to use either long standard assumptions or directly using random work. It left a, an interesting question can we have a the malleable hash from standard standard assumptions. We give a simple construction for the malleable hash using witness authentication risk. Intuitively, perfect one witness is commitment with identification. We can add identification to commitment using witness authentication risk. And the long malleable hash, the malleability follows our unforgeability. We have these constructions. And we just use a witness authentication need proof to demonstrate the commitment is well formed and set the committed message as an identifier to support the identification functionality. Our construction can surely be from standard assumptions and from and from and for general and, and can handle general auxiliary information. We can also use witness authentication risk to prove well formedness of public key. Set encryption ciphertext and set the message as as, as identifier as uh, and obtain a plain test checkable encryption, which is the first standard model construction for long uniform messages. We can also use witness authentication proof to prove the group group membership and give a simple construction of a group signature with verifier local revocation. Our construction is the first to satisfy auxiliary input security. That is, the security properties are preserved even when the adversary have a arbitrary hard to invert auxiliary information about secret case, which, which provides a strong guarantee when the case is leaked. To have a concluding, we, care, we, we carefully integrate identification functionality that has appeared in various primitives into NISC, one of the most fundamental primitives. Will address many subtle challenges, subtle challenges to our secure constructions. As a result, we can give simple constructions to diverse applications and advance the state of the art 
in all these applications. We believe there are other features and functionalities that implicitly exist in seemingly unrelated, unrelated domains and still lack a unified view. We left it to, to be explored how to study them in fundamental primitives like NISCs. And the sex, that's all. <laughs>